Good day. So let's have this example. A deliver beam composed of 375 millimeters by 200 millimeters glued together to form an I beam. It is loaded with 9 kilonewtons at the free end and 3 kilonewtons per meter all throughout the span of 2.4 meters. Number one. So we are required to compute for the maximum shearing stress in the glued portion. Then number two. And it is the maximum shearing stress of uh, the beam. So since this is not a rectangular beam, okay, we are to use uh, the general formula for horizontal shearing stress, that is the F sub B, equal to okay, the shear, the first moment of area, this is divided by the moment of inertia with respect to the neutral axis, okay, multiplied by uh, the width. Okay, so computing for the maximum shear, for a cantilever beam, Okay, the equivalent of the maximum shear is simply equal to the vertical reaction at the uh, fixed support. So what is the equivalent of this uh, uniformly distributed load? Okay, the three equivalent for uh, the three kilonewtons per meter. It's a single force equivalent. Let's say W. That is the three kilonewtons per uh, meter for a span of 2.4 uh, meters. So we have that value as three times uh, 2.4. So we have that as 7.2. So this is equal to 7.2 kilo newtons. So computing for the maximum shear. So take note, we are computing for maximum shearing stress. So therefore, we are to use the maximum shear. So this is, let's say, B max or I by summation of forces, vertical. This is by summation of forces vertical equal to zero, assuming upward forces to be a uh, positive. That is, okay, the maximum shear is equal to that is the 7.2 kilonewtons plus the concentrated load 9 kilonewtons. So we have a magnitude of okay, this is 16.2 kilonewtons. Okay, that is the maximum uh, the maximum shear. Okay, for the statical moment of area. I take note that we have a symmetrical I beam, which means okay, we can easily locate the neutral axis, that is half of its uh, depth. Uh, let's say this uh, red line is our uh, neutral axis. Okay, what is the total depth of uh, the beam? Okay, the total depth of the beam is okay, we have a thickness of a flange of 75, 75 millimeters. So plus I okay, 200 mm. So that is uh, okay, 200 plus 75 plus 75. That is the same as 350. Uh, okay, the total depth of the beam is 75 plus 75. That is the two plunges plus okay, the height of the web. That is 200. 350. Half of 350 is equal to that is 175. So basically, uh. The location of the neutral axis I, from extreme fibers is I, 175 millimeters. I, so if we are computing for I, number one, that is the maximum shearing stress in the glued portion, uh, glued portion, that is the junction of I, that is the junction of the plunge and uh, the web. So we are to compute for the shearing stress at the junction. Okay, the junction of okay, the flange end, uh, the web. So therefore, all we have to do is, okay, we are to moment the area above this uh, layer. So what is that area above this uh, layer? Basically, that is the area of the flange. So we are talking about this uh, area. Okay. So computing for uh, the first moment of area, that is uh, the Q, we have Q is equal to what is the area of uh, the flange? That is 200 millimeters by uh, 75. We are to moment this area okay, about the neutral axis. So what is the distance of its uh, centroid? Uh, let's say this is the center of gravity of the flange. Okay, what is this distance? Uh, the center of gravity of the flange towards the neutral axis. So that is basically equal to 175 Okay, 175 less half of 75. So 175 minus 
that's 175 less half of 75 so that is that distance is equal to 137.5 so this is 137.5 millimeters so we are to okay, compute for the first moment of area of the flange that is the area above the junction so this is multiplied by 100 I multiplied by 137.5 so we have now the value of Q the first moment of area of that is the area above the junction so this is 200 I multiplied by 75 the area of the flange the distance of its centroid towards the neutral axis is 137.5 so we have uh, that is 2 million uh, six, 62,500 or let's uh, let's say we have 2.0625 2 this is times 10 raised to 6 okay, millimeters raised to uh, 3 uh, that is 2,062,500 and then okay, we are now to compute for uh, the moment of inertia of the section with respect to the neutral axis so since we have a symmetrical I-beam okay, how do we compute for Okay, the moment of inertia with respect to the neutral uh, axis. Okay, so we may analyze this one as okay, a rectangle. Okay, so how do we compute for the moment of inertia for a rectangular section? That is the BD cube divided by a 12. All we have to do for this uh, case is we are to subtract these empty spaces. Okay, this is only applicable for a symmetrical I-beam uh, for a reason. Okay, that these empty spaces okay, has have the same uh, neutral axis as okay, as the I beam. So we are now computing for uh, the moment of inertia with respect to the neutral axis, analyzed as a solid rectangular beam. Okay, what is its a base? Okay, that the base is equal to that is 200 uh, millimeters. So this is uh, 200 millimeters. Then uh, we assume that its a uh, total depth is 350 mm so this is 350 cube okay, divided by uh, 12 we are just to subtract okay, the moment of inertia of those empty spaces so what is the base uh, width of the empty spaces that is we have 200 millimeters okay, 200 millimeters all we have to do is I okay, subtract the solid part okay, that is the web so what is the width of the web that is, okay, we have 75 uh, millimeters. So that is the width of these uh, two empty spaces. Okay, 200 mm less the solid part, okay, that will be the width of the empty spaces. Then the total depth of the empty space is okay, the same as the height of the web, 200 millimeters. So this is 200 uh, millimeters uh, raised to 3 divided by uh, 12. So this is now the moment of inertia with respect to the neutral axis. So this procedure is only applicable for symmetrical I-beams. So we have okay, uh, analyzing this uh, beam as a rectangular beam. That is 200 by 350 uh, raised to 3. Uh, this is okay, divided by uh, 12. So less the empty spaces, that is 200 millimeters. Okay, the solid part, that is the web, 75 the total depth of the empty space is the same as the height of the web that is 200 I raised to 3 and this is to be divided by I divided by 12 so we have that value I that value is equal to well, let's say this is equal to 631,250,000 uh, 631.25 this is times 10 raised to 6 uh, millimeters raised to uh, 4 so for uh, to double check uh, this is equal to 631 million uh, 250,000 millimeters raised to uh, 4 okay then if we are not to compute for uh, the maximum shearing stress in the glued for portion okay, what is the value of B I, we are to use I, the value of B that is the width of the web I, that is equal to 75 millimeters I, that is the width of the web I, computing for 
the maximum shearing stress okay, in the glued portion let's say this is F sub B is equal to what is the magnitude of the maximum shear that is 16.2 kilonewtons or let's have it as 16,200 newtons the first moment of area of the flange that is the area above the junction or the area above the glued portion this is equal to 2.0 625 this is times 10 raised to 6 a unit is a millimeters raised to uh, millimeters raised to 3 then uh, this is divided by okay, the moment of inertia with respect to the neutral axis is 631.25 this is times 10 raised to 6 millimeters raised to uh, raised to 4 then the width of the web that's equal to 75 millimeters. Okay, so computing for the shearing stress in the glued portion. So this is equal to 16,200 newtons multiplied by 2.0. Uh, 625, this is times 10 raised to uh, 6 millimeters raised to 3. All over, this is 631.25. Uh, this is times 10 raised to 6 millimeters raised to 4. Then the width of the web is 75 millimeters. So we have that value as okay, 0 0.7. This is 0 0.705. Our remaining unit, if we are to do unit analysis, uh, that is the same as the newtons per square millimeter or the same as the mega or uh, the mega pascal. So we have the answer. This is the shearing stress for the glued portion. That is 0 0.705 uh, mega pascal. This is our answer for question uh, number one. Okay, the shearing stress uh, in the glued uh, portion. Then for number two, for number two, we are required to compute for the maximum shear stress of the beam. Uh, take note for symmetrical I beam or for symmetrical figures. This is for question number two. Uh, take note that uh, for symmetrical I-beam, okay, the, the location of the maximum shearing stress is equal to the shearing stress at the neutral axis. So we can use okay, the uh, general formula for this one since, again, it's not a rectangular beam. That is the F sub B is equal to the maximum shear, the statical moment of area or the first moment of area divided by the moment of inertia with respect to the neutral axis and uh, the width. So we are using uh, the same values. Okay, the maximum shear is equal to 16.2 kilonewtons. Okay, the moment of inertia is equal to 631.25. This is uh, times, times 10 raised to uh, 6 millimeters raised to 4. Okay, the width of the neutral axis, so if you are to observe what is the width of the neutral axis, that is obviously the same as 75, okay, 75 millimeters. Okay, so all we have to do for this uh, question number two okay, is uh, change the value of the statical moment of area or the first moment of area. So all we have to do now is consider the area above, okay, area above or area below the neutral axis. So we have the area of the flange. Uh, we are to consider the, uh, the area of the flange and locate its uh, centroid from the neutral axis. Uh, we have this value uh, before that is equal to 137.5 uh, millimeters. And since uh, the total depth of the web is 200 millimeters, half of that is obviously that is uh, 100. And it's uh, the distance of its centroid towards the neutral axis, half of 100, okay, that is I50. So we'll be having the total uh, first moment of area above the neutral axis okay, for the flange, that is 200 multiplied by uh, 75. The distance of its centroid towards the neutral axis is 137.5. Then plus... Okay, that is uh, this time the area uh, area above the neutral axis that is uh, within the fl within the web of uh, the beam. So area is 100 
atot a depth of 100 and a width of 75. Okay, the distance of its centroid towards the neutral axis is okay, 50. So we have now the new value of the statical moment of area or the first moment of area. So that is, we have 200. This is for the flange. So this is uh, 200 uh, multiplied by 75. I multiplied by 137.5. Uh, that is for the flange and the portion of the web. That is 100. I uh, multiplied by 75. And the distance of its centroid towards the neutral axis is I uh, 50. So let's equal to. So this is 2,437,500. Uh, if you are to double check, uh, that is 200 multiplied by 75. The distance of its centroid is 137.5. Uh, Plus, for uh, the portion of the web, that is 175, then I uh, 50. That is 2,437,500. Or right, let's have it as I uh, 2 point. 4375. This is times 10 raised to 6. I millimeters raised to a 3. So 2.4375 times 10 raised to 6 millimeters raised to a 3. So computing for the maximum shearing stress for uh, the beam. Uh, this is a uh, take note for a symmetrical I beam. The maximum horizontal shearing stress is the shearing stress at the neutral axis. And this is now equal to, uh, the maximum shear is 16,200 newtons. Statical moment of area is 2.4375. This is times 10 raised to 6, millimeters raised to 3. Then this is to be divided by, okay, the moment of inertia with respect to the neutral axis is 631.25. This is times 10 raised to 6, millimeters raised to 4. The width of the neutral axis is the width of the web, 75 millimeters. Okay, so computing for the maximum shearing stress or maximum horizontal shearing stress for this I-beam is now equal to, or is equal to 16,200 newtons. The value of Q is I 2.4375. This is times 10 raised to 6. I to be divided by 631.25 times 10 raised to 6. The width of the web is 75. So we have that this value as 0 0.834. Uh, and if you are to do unit analysis, that is mega uh, pascal. So this is 0 0.834 uh, mega pascal. Uh, this will be our answer for the second requirement, the maximum shearing stress of uh, the beam. Okay, and if we are to ask, for example, if we are to uh, if we are asked what is the minimum shearing stress of the web, okay, this is uh, the 0 0.705. Okay, that is the shearing stress at the junction. So at the junction of uh, the plunge and the web. So at the junction, so this is also uh, the minimum, uh, minimum shearing stress of uh, the web of an I beam. Uh, the same with the wide flange. Uh, so at the junction, that is the minimum shearing stress of uh, the web. And the maximum shearing stress is at the neutral axis. So this will be our uh, solution for this problem.